when you finally see corn on the cob in the farmer's market, that's when you know it's summer, you know? They're 80 pence each. I'm gonna try and get the biggest boys possible. I also find it so weird that people call it courgette here. And let's head back home to make some lunch. Wait, does it go slowly or does it go like whoop? Okay, so we're back in the kitchen. I have some corn and I'm thinking about making some corn rice. Rip this bad boy apart. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So hairy. This be the thumbnail. Welcome to Disney Channel. The pot that I'm using is gonna be a this one. And I got this in Muji, Canada. I don't know if it's available still, but I really love this pot. Um, it's a little tunnabe. Let's move on to the rice. So a lot of people like how I label my bins, but this is my rice bin. The rice that I'm using is short grain rice, so it's commonly called sushi rice. The reason why I'm using this rice is because it's really sticky and I personally think that sticky rice works a lot better with the corn because um, it has a lot of sweetness as well. So this one cup is a little bit different from a US metric cup, but it should be around the same. It's interchangeable. For this tonnabe, which is around one liter, I'm gonna put one and a half cups of rice. So you ideally want to wash it until the water that comes out of it is pretty clear. You want to rub the rice against each other so that some of the extra starch on the outside of the rice comes out. I've washed this rice for about seven times and you can see that the water is a lot more clear. What I'm going to do is actually let it soak in this water for 30 minutes before we start making the rice. For one pot of rice, I'm thinking one corn is enough. So a neat little trick for getting some of the kernels off the corn is putting a bowl inside a larger bowl, but flip it upside down so that it kind of works as a pedestal to steady the corn. I'm gonna cut along the surface so that all the corn kernels are collected at the bottom of the bowl instead of spraying it everywhere. That to me looks good. So this is roughly around one cup of corn. And we're gonna just snap this in half. You can already see so much of the natural water coming out of the corn because as soon as I did that, it literally splattered all over me. I got Jackson Pollock. I don't wanna just have corn rice for lunch. So I'm going to make some miso soup with it. I had a few mushrooms from um, before in my fridge. I'm not sure what the name of these mushrooms are, which is probably bad. Um, I think this is called lion's head. No, it's not. What is this called? Anyways, we have some shroomies. I have this unknown name and some enoki mushrooms right here. So I have three types of miso because I'm extra like that. So I have this darkest one and it's called Aka Miso. This miso, as it says on the package, is really good for soups. Because it has a long fermentation time, it has a lot of nuanced flavors and it is quite funky. The next miso I have is this Hikari Miso, which is one of my favorite to use. It's a lot lighter in color. So that means that it's not gonna be as funky, but it also has some sweetness. And it's really a good in-between medium. If you're gonna buy one miso, I would say buy this one. And last but not least, I have this sweet young miso. It's the lightest in color because it hasn't been aged for a long time. It's very sweet. I love using this in desserts because it doesn't have that funkiness. And you can also add this to salad dressings because it's quite subtle and gentle and it's not a huge punch of flavor. It still has a lot of umami, yes, but it's not gonna be as pungent and strong as this dark miso that we have right here. This is kombu and it is dried kelp. 
what this does is it creates a gentle, subtle sweetness that really ties everything together. Using a wet towel and just kind of scraping off any of the residual salt or any gunk that could be on the kelp. So high heat until the water comes to a simmer and we're gonna let this go for about five to 10 minutes to let some of the flavors infuse. To let some of the flavors infuse. Put a little bit more water in um, because I want more miso soup. So that's around a liter. So these are boiling right now. I'm gonna turn the heat down to a low simmer and we're gonna put some dried shiitake mushrooms. So these have a lot of flavor. I'm going to put about half a cup. So the kombu has done its job. I'm gonna take it out because we don't want huge chunks of seaweed in it. We started off with about one liter of water. We're now down to 900 milliliters. I'm gonna put in one tablespoon of dark miso. Totally optional, but I'm gonna use this sieve right here to get out some of the chunks. So you do that, just mix it around. As you can see, there's some soybean chunks that's been sieved out. So this is optional. If you don't mind it, just skip this process. I'm also putting in one tablespoon of the dark red miso paste to give it some extra funk. So I'm not even gonna bother adding the young miso because it's salty enough you always want to taste as you go. Every miso brand is also going to have different levels of saltiness, so just taste it. This is boiling, so we're going to add the mushrooms in now. Taking apart some of the big chunks. Some enoki as well. You know what? I'm just going to add all of it in. I love mushrooms. Mmm. The flavor coming in from the mushrooms is really amazing. Super, ooh, I'm really bad with like explaining flavor. So after 30 minutes, the rice is ready. You can see how much plumper it is as compared to before. This allows for the heat to be evenly distributed and to have a foolproof pot rice. So we started with one and a half cups of rice. So I'm gonna put in one cup and a quarter of water so that the rest of the water can come from the corn. I'm gonna add the cob in the rice. Just put it in the center. And I'm gonna put in about one cup of corn kernels. Shimmy it around so that it's even. Medium high heat. Pot goes on and we're gonna let it come up to temperature and once it starts simmering, you can take a little sneaky peek. And once the rice is slightly simmering and bubbling, we're gonna turn the heat down to the lowest setting possible and let it go for 15 to 20 minutes. So we're gonna take our sneaky peek. Even before we take a sneaky peek, you know that it's bubbling away because it, you can see the steam rising from the little hole. So bubbling away. I'm gonna kill the heat down to the lowest setting possible and just let it steam low and slow, uh, low and slow. Okay, so I just turned off the heat. It's been 15 minutes. I'm going to open it. Oh my lord, look how beautiful she is. I'm just gonna take the cob out so that I can mix around the rice. Look how beautiful that rice is. I mean, the smell of the sweetness from the corn. I got my favorite bowl right here for obvious reasons. You kind of want the top to be a little bit flat because I am going to add a knob of butter. Are you guys ready for my knob of butter? Now, while the rice is hot, I'm gonna drizzle in one circle 
of soy sauce. This is just regular light soy sauce. Okay, that was like 1.5 drizzle. Now, if you're feeling really fancy, you can put a little bit of truffle oil in it too, and it's so good. And I'm gonna be using the truffle oil that I got gifted from Truff. And no, this is not a sponsorship. I'm only showing items that I really like. That's more than enough. The butter is just melting into the rice. It's coating it beautifully. The smell of the butter and the corn just reminds you of the movie theater. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite. I'm gonna take another bite. Just a little bit of truffle oil with the butter and the sweetness coming from the corn. I'm gonna have it with some miso soup. Mm. The funkiness is really a perfect cleanser to a dish that's kind of unctuous. There's so much flavor coming from the dried shiitake mushrooms and the fresh mushrooms that we put in. It's just a very homey and hearty meal that really doesn't take that much time to make and it's a quick and easy lunch to whip up or for a dinner. It's just so good and it's really, it was what? A dollar, not even a dollar for one corn. And to create such a dish that's so cheap, but so elegant, you gotta try it out. Good, right? It's like the miso feels like when you drink like a uh, like a really good wine or something that that agedness. Yeah, you, it's from the mushrooms. It's like comparable to that. Mm -hmm.